Good morning everyone. With the War Within's first official week behind us, I wanted to take some time and share my thoughts on the War Within so far. And if you want my quick opinion, it has been awesome. At the end of the video, I will also share a brief channel update as we recently hit over 1000 subscribers, a feat for which I cannot thank you all enough. But first, the War Within. And we will start with probably the hottest topic, the release and the pre-release. Overall, I'm not the biggest fan, but I'm also not fully against it. My reasoning for that being is the pre-release hopefully brought in a lot of money, extra money for Blizzard, and if they can now utilize that money to make a better game for us, then there's nothing really for me to complain. I think the downsides of it are quite minimal if you look at it overall from uh, an overall impact point of view. I know people are not happy about it. I'm not really happy about it. But if the money that it brought in will get us a better game, then I can kind of see some benefit in that. There's two things that I really didn't like about the pre-release, and one of them is that it was a weekend. So the War Within launched on a Tuesday, and the pre-release allowed you access from the Thursday before, I think Thursday night before. Now that is an entire weekend, and if you're like me, you have a full-time job and some responsibilities outside of that job, you can't really play all that much throughout the week. So if you're a working man, if you did the pre-release, you had an extra weekend to play the game and experience the launch, while on the normal launch on Tuesday, you probably didn't really have that much time to play the game until the Friday or the Saturday. If they would just shift it around where the actual release was on a Friday and the pre-release would allow you access from the Monday to the Friday, then for a lot of working people, it might not really be that big of a problem because why would you really do the pre-release? You could only play one or two hours a day, maybe, if you get it, because you're still working. And then on the Friday when you're off work, the game releases and you get an entire weekend where you can play and enjoy the actual launch of the expansion. So that's one thing I really did not like about it. The second one is, do not make changes to any leveling stuff or anything that people were doing in the pre-release the day after the full release. What they've done is, leveling was really, really fast. It still is, by the way. It's probably only like half an hour slower than it was. It's a bit less ridiculous. But one day after the release, they kind of fixed how the level scaling worked. So leveling was a little bit slower after that fix came in. You don't do that, Blizzard. Give people who got the full release at least as much time as the people in the pre-release to experience that. So give them about like four days after the release and then fix it. Because it was problematic, it had to be fixed, but at least give the people some time to play with it. I think that's enough about the pre-release, so let's just get into the meat and bones of the expansion. First of all was completing the story, and for me the story was perfect. It was a breath of fresh air. It is really short, probably two to three hours if you play through it like just focusing on the story quests if you just finish the story quests you'll get to level 75 76 by the end of the story and then you'll unlock about everything you'll need to unlock now the story itself i think it's to the point it's good it builds up salathat as a good character and it establishes some of the characters around the zones and some of the societies in the different zones let's put it that way so i think i really like it it's really putting in place the building blocks for the rest of the expansion which i definitely do enjoy but also there's not too much fluff as in you don't arrive at a town and then be like, oh, Zalathat's over there murdering people. But first, can you get me these 10 flowers? There's a lot less of that in this expansion and a lot more to the point just storytelling, which is probably why it is so short. Um, and I don't have a problem with it being that short. While I was leveling through the story, I did every delve at rank 3, which we'll talk about a bit later. I did every dragon flying race and I did every single side quest on my main. I'm just a bit of a map completionist, you don't really have to do that. But if you want to do that, what I would recommend, especially if it's your first time leveling through the zones, is do the story first, complete the story, because that will unlock a lot of different things like world quests and so on, and then come back and do all the side quests. I think that's the one thing I kind of regret doing it all zone by zone and not just going through the story. But overall, really solid story, really solid questing, really solid experience and a very good introduction to the new expansion. So I absolutely loved it. Obviously, I took some time leveling my main character. And once I was done with the main story, my main DPS is going to be a DPS evoker playing both augmentation and devastation. I wanted to get him ready for raiding. Now, I've got some time off now, so I've got quite some time to play with the release. 
but when the raid comes out, uh, I'll be back at work. So I'm not really sure how much Mythic Zero gearing and how many delves I will be able to do before our first raid, which will probably be on a Thursday. So what I decided is I wanted to gear my character out as good as possible with current heroic gear, just in case I don't really get to farm Mythic Zeros before we actually get into the raid. So I wanted to make sure my character was prepared. To do that, when the release came out, I started with Heroic Dungeons with a bunch of friends. And the main things I wanted to focus on was farming the Arakara trinkets. I think there's a trinket in Hallowfall that was really good for me as well. And then I also wanted a weapon from the Rookery. Now, there's been a bit of controversy about people leaving groups. What we just did as a guild is we just got five or even four guildies together. And we just did first boss runs of those dungeons or second boss runs in Hallowfall. Which just means that we ran in, we killed the first boss, we looted it, went back out, reset the dungeon over and over again. Uh, I think we farmed probably 10 to 15 of the trinkets in Arakara that way for people in the guild. So I find that kind of gearing just a lot of fun where you can target it gear. And with the beginning of the expansion, I just find gearing in general really fun where you can get gear from world quests, from delves, from heroic dungeons, from quests. You can get gear from reputation. It's such a wide variety of sources where you can get gear from and kind of everything you do leads to you to improve your character. While once Mythic Plus and Raid comes out, I feel like you're pigeonholed into doing just Mythic Plus or just a Raid for any gear upgrades and everything aside of that is not really anything to do with upgrading your gear. So I'm really happy in the beginning of expansion, you can just engage with any content and it kind of improves your character along the way. There's been some comments on dungeons being too easy and... In a way, I do agree. Normal dungeons are ridiculously easy. Heroic dungeons are still quite easy. And while I don't mind them being easy, because in the end, they're still kind of heroic dungeons, I am afraid of how big the leap will be between heroic and mythic, especially for less experienced players. I hope that the gap between heroic dungeons and mythic dungeons is not going to be as big as I think it will be. Because if that gap is going to be massive, that will catch a lot of people off guard basically. Uh, I hope that that gap won't be too big but we'll see when Mythic Zero comes out. Uh, I think for now the dungeons are fine. I've been enjoying most of the dungeons. I've got a little bit of a grope with what is it Dark Left where you have the candle mini game. Just make the candle area a little bit bigger Blizzard just for that dungeon because I was playing my Warlock and I tried to get a cast off and just the cards just moved away from me while I was casting and just you do your cast and you do one damage because the damage reduction when you're in the shadow. So um, it got a bit silly and a bit annoying. So maybe just make the radius a tiny bit bigger. That would definitely go a long way for that section. Then we got to a point where my main's kind of fully geared. Um, I was also leveling some alts on the side, but my main was fully geared. So we got to a point where for a lot of people, the content draw started setting in. And I've been hearing this from a lot of people like there's nothing to do. We can't do anything. There's no mythic plus. We can't farm anything. Me personally, I'm happy for that. I knew I had a couple of weeks before any of that came out. So I just took my time with the questing. I read through the quests, which is the first time I've ever done this in WoW, is reading through all the quests, reading through all the story, going on these little treasure hunts that Blizzard lays out for you, trying to figure out how to activate certain treasures. Like I've took my time for all of that. So by the time I was 80 and did the main story quests, some of my guildies already had four level 80s um, in comparison. I really enjoy it because now I'm at a point where I'm happy with my character to go into raid. So there's a couple of options that you have now. You can either not play the expansion for a little bit. If you just have your main, you're happy with where your character is. And that's what some people do. They start playing other games. And while that is weird on an expansion launch, it doesn't mean that an expansion launch is that you have to no life it for three weeks. You could just do what you have to do, be done, and then come back next week or in two weeks when Mythic Plus or the raids come out and have some more fun then without burning yourself out on an infinite power grind like Torghast or Artifact Power in the past, you could just take it chill and play when there's something that you want to engage with. So I really do enjoy that. For me, I wanted more out of the expansion, so I ended up doing a bunch of different stuff. I farmed the bee mounts, and for those of you that don't know, you can farm the bee mount by collecting 900 sizzling cinder pollen, and the sizzling cinder pollen drops from the bees around the cinder brew meadery. They're all elite, so you want to group up, and in about a one and a half hour, two hours with some guildies, we farmed us a couple of bee mounts. Something that I usually wouldn't do in the beginning of an expansion because there's too much to do. And now I felt like I had the time to do this. I then turned to my professions. I leveled my professions. I did skinning and leatherworking. 
I specialized into profession equipment, which I just wanted to do for my guild, but I also made quite some money out of it, just making the profession equipment and selling it on the auction house. And after doing skinning, leatherworking, taking my time with those, I even did my cooking and my fishing. And fishing's 300 levels, it takes quite a long time. Those are things that I would usually do later in the expansion, when I'm just really bored of it and when everything's already figured out. But now I kind of just enjoyed going my own way, doing my own thing with them, not looking up a guide, just kind of going around fishing, going around cooking, figuring out where the materials drop from for cooking, figuring out where I can catch all the fish and so on. It has been really fun. Now for cooking, I do recommend picking this up. If you don't know yet, there's these things that you can make now, which is the hearty food, which basically combines five pieces of a normal food item and creates it into one hearty food of that food item. And the hearty food lasts through death. So basically like the alchemical flavor pocket, but now it's actually your food that lasts through death rather than a piece of equipment on your gear. Uh, they are bind on warbound, so you have to have cooking to make it yourself. I believe the normal food unlocks at level one, so you just need to pick up cooking and then you can combine it into hearty food. If you want to do it for feasts, I think you need to get your cooking up to level 50 because yes, there are also feasts which last true death now so that will be really helpful for progression although it does take 10 feasts to make which is going to be quite expensive if you think that your guild uses more than 10 feasts an hour in a progression raid you probably want to get some of those hearty feasts made and for fishing you've got the hallowfall fishing derby on saturdays which gives you one hour to catch three specific fish from around the isles a pretty chill event that rewards tokens and those tokens can unlock some cosmetics as I already alluded to, after that I leveled some alts, I want to have all the classes maxed because I want to make some more content for you guys on all of the different classes and specs, but that will be coming in the next couple of months. Since leveling is so easy, it's really fast, you just spam dungeons. I've already gotten I think 6, I think I've got 6 alts up now. I really enjoy leveling being that fast, it's a really good thing for the game, I believe. Nobody really likes leveling, especially not after your first character, so I think it's a really good thing for the game. My initial plan for this was to make a similar video to my bronze video where I did X ways to level and kind of compare the good versus the bad versus the side benefits. But currently I'm not going to do that. I might bring it out a bit later when delves are a bit more of a thing because dungeons is just by far the best. That's a bit unfortunate because delves are the feature of the expansion and they're not great for leveling, which is a bit sad. I think Max on the recent Poly C said the same thing. Delves should have been the best way to level, and I fully agree with him. Like Delves should have been the the best way to level. And when talking about Delves, I think Delves are amazingly fun. The fact that there is no pressure, you can do it at your own pace, find some treasures along the way, I really am enjoying the Delve system so far. Will I enjoy farming it on a weekly basis? I'm not too sure yet, but I am very intrigued to find out what the hidden Delve is after completing all Delves on the highest difficulty. So I will surely be looking into that. My only real gropes with the system is one that leveling is way too slow and two is that blizzard capped bran and that really removes all reason to do delves right now. Why not give people who enjoy the delves the option to grind out bran? Yes he may become really powerful but is it really that bad because we will have maxed out brands eventually anyway. And lastly only having access to level 3 delves in my opinion is a little bit too low. I understand that Delves will tie into the gear progression, but they could have given us a bit more of a challenge at this stage. I believe level 3 is a bit too easy for the gear we have access to right now. It would be more fun with very limited gear to push ourselves to a bit more difficult content for those who enjoy that. I only really care about min-maxing on my main, so on my ult I actually decided to use the keys just to see what rewards the coffers could hold. And if you don't know, you're only supposed to if you're min-maxing use your coffer keys in heroic week i guess that might be my last grope with it i don't think that's a good thing to give people a resource that they're not supposed to use yet in order to get the best gear i don't really like that type of deal so i decided to use them on my alts once you use the coffer keys you get these little echoes you can then go to these memories or the echoes of azeroth and if you do all the echoes of azeroth you actually get like a mythic echoes of azeroth challenge unlocked I'm quite intrigued for what that is, and if I find out, I will let you guys know, but for now, I don't think we have access to it yet. You need to do the achievement, and I just haven't done the achievement yet. So once I've done it, maybe I'll make a short video out of it and let you guys know. Next up, Warbands. Warbands is just amazing. I don't think there's anything bad to say about Warbands. 
the shared reputation is amazing. Just the sheer fact that I don't have to do every world quest on all of my characters. If my main doesn't need world quests for anything, I can log onto an alt that's leveling, do the world quest, and at least get the experience from it. Or I can log onto an alt who needs the gear from a world quest, and I can do it. And my main will still get the rep benefits from that world quest, but I wouldn't actually have to go out on my main and force myself to do something that doesn't give me a reward except for the rep. So I really love the ID. Trading of the currency is amazing as well. Just everything about Warband so far is amazing. There is, however, one personal issue I have with the system. I don't know how many of you ran into it. I use my Warbound bank as a reagent bank. You can craft out of your Warband bank with the materials that are in there. So before I log out on all my characters, I dump all my materials in the Warband. Just gonna call it a Warbank for now. I dump all my materials in the Warbank, and then I can craft on every character with all the materials I've gathered. The only thing you can't do is fulfill crafting orders out of your Warbank. And it is really, really, really annoying me, Blizzard. So please fix that. Before you can craft something, you need to go into your war bank, take the material out, and then you can make a crafting order with it. And on top of that, the only way to get access to your war bank is through a two-hour cooldown. Which, if it's on cooldown, tough luck, you just can't get anything out of there. Blizzard, if you could fix that, warband's best system you've ever come up with. Absolutely amazing. And I think lastly, there's the weekly events. And in short, not gonna waste too much time on it. Heat Troop, I don't really like it. It's just a fill the bar world quest. There's no story around it. It's just quite boring overall, I find. If they would have made the stories that they're telling a little bit more interesting or a bit more relevant, I probably would have loved it or wouldn't have minded it as much. But right now, it's just fill the bar. Hello Fall, you have the quests where you light the braziers and then you get more quests. I don't really have a problem with it. It's just there are so many of them in Hello Fall. All the other weekly events take like 5 to 10 minutes to complete, maybe 15. The Hallow Fall quest, I think, I don't know if it's exact, like, there's like 14, 15 quests there. With the world quest and then the separate quests you can get from lighting the braziers, it's a lot. I mean, I'm not complaining, I can grind them out in one evening or in one day and then have them done for the rest of the week. But I'm just a bit surprised with the sheer volume of quests the Hallow Fall one has, while the others don't really have much of anything. The Pacts and Ashkahets, I was really excited for this. And while I really like the system of like the talent trees and you grow with the pack to get more benefits, it's another system that's just world quests with extra steps. I was hoping they would be a bit more creative with it. The rumors that you unlock or the excavations or whatever it is with the other generals. You just talk to someone, do a world quest and you get some currency. Instead of just flying somewhere, doing a quest, you now need to fly somewhere that you don't know where they are unless you buy a map. You then talk to someone and then you do a world quest, which... In my opinion, you know, it's just a world quest with extra steps. I would have loved them to be a bit more creative with this. Is it a system I hate? Not really. It's just world quests and we all know what world quests are. And lastly, I think the one with the most potential is Awakening the Machine. So Awakening the Machine is like a wave style defense type of deal where every wave spawns some enemies and you need to protect an NPC in the middle. And every single enemy has its own type of mechanics. So some of them you stun and they disappear. Others make other robots immune. You've got a tower that shoots a laser that you need to block with your body, so you need to stand in between that. There's a bunch of different enemies that you have to deal with in different ways. And while while creatively as an ID, it is a really good ID. Currently, it's a bit like Luster because one, it is way too easy. And two, there's only five different types of mobs. And while if they would combine all of them together, it might get a bit more complicated and difficult. Right now, it's just a little bit too easy. So... I would love to see them iterate on that more, have different types of NPCs, more different things to deal with, and have people think about what talents they pick, for example, before they go in to deal with specific scenarios that may occur while within the Awakening the Machine minigame. Overall, really great ID. Execution could have been a little bit better, but I hope that they reiterate on it. And they still have time. It's the first week of the expansion. All these systems, who knows, maybe we haven't seen all of it yet. Maybe we've got a bit more coming. So I hope that Blizzard keeps iterating on these and hopefully we'll see some more improved variations of this in the near future. That was it really. That was my first week in the War Within, uh, as well as my thoughts on the expansion so far. So in conclusion, I absolutely love the expansion. And while I would love for Blizzard to take a few more risks with these weekly events and delves, there's still plenty of time for them to achieve that. And I will definitely be playing a lot more and pushing out a lot more content for you guys. And that brings me to the last topic for today, a brief channel update. 
First of all, I want to thank you all so much for your support as I reached 1000 subscribers last week, a goal I never really expected to reach and definitely not as fast as I have. I started making these videos for fun and was expecting to have little to no viewers for most of my videos, but you all really just smashed it out of the park. My plans for the War Within are definitely far from over and this will definitely include the WoW solo challenge many of you are absolutely loving right now. My goal will be to upload an episode of Solo WoW every other week on Thursdays, starting as of this Thursday, and in the weeks between that, I will be making some War Within content mainly, but I also would like to dabble into challenge runs of other games. Whether or not those will be posted on this channel is yet to be decided, but we will cross that bridge once we get there. I really want my channel to revolve around having fun in games we all love, even though people may feel there is not always room for it. And I also love helping people out. So do expect some new and continuations on my older guides in the future, so stay tuned for that. I think I've talked enough, and it's time to wrap things up for now. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day.